In this video, we are tracking a multi-day severe weather threat across the southern U.S. The same system responsible for the severe weather will bring heavy snow, ice, and flooding to many. Which category do you fall in, and how impactful will this storm really be? All that and more coming right up. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Guys, this is a big storm. There's a lot of different impacts from Canada all the way down to Mexico, so I'm not going to waste any time here, and we're going to get right into it. Here we go. All right, let's start off here taking a look at the United States of America on the NAM model. This is technically what the radar could look like as we go into the future. And if you want to keep up with the time and date in Eastern time, it's always above my head up there. Now let's get this train on the tracks and start rolling her forward. Starting off at 1 p.m. today, all the way through 8 or 9 p.m. tonight, things are pretty quiet across the U.S. We do have a clipper up here in the north that's going to bring just a little bit of snow to northern portions of Minnesota. Most of that's going to be reserved for up there way into Ontario and north of the Great Lakes. And then of course, we do have those snow showers we've been talking about for a while from Wyoming all the way down into California. This is associated with that big bowling ball trough that's coming up and it's going to form our big storm. Okay, the first things we're going to notice tomorrow around 2 p.m. is we're going to see some of this rain and freezing rain break out here in Iowa all the way up through Michigan. What happens from there is a lot of moisture starts to show up. Okay, we got heavy rain in uh, St. Louis all the way down through southern portions of Illinois. We got some more of that sleet and freezing rain falling through the upper Midwest and now we've got some storms forming down here in the South Central US and that's what we're going to talk about first okay today we're going to break this down into three sections we're going to start off right now with the severe weather then we're going to talk about the snow and then we're going to talk about the ice and flooding once again this is a big storm we got to take it one piece at a time so let's get started okay so zooming down here to the South Central US the NAM three kilometers shows this convection starting over here in Texas now for the past, I don't know, several days, we've been assuming uh, that the moisture was going to interact with that dry line and start producing supercells and thunderstorms up here in Oklahoma, which is still very much so a possibility. Uh, however, some of the latest guidance is saying that that's going to be suppressed down to the south and west. So down here around Amarillo and Lubbock, uh, you guys could see some uh, isolated showers and storms tomorrow night, but those are going to progress off to the north and east. They're going to go past Wichita Falls around 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. with uh, possibly some some big hail, some gusty winds, and an isolated tornado threat. But things really start going here around 5 a.m. Early in the morning on Thursday, uh, we could be talking about a uh, quasi-linear convective system or good old line of storms uh, here between Texas and Oklahoma, uh, which once again, we could be seeing hail, damaging winds, and isolated tornadoes at this time. If we switch over to our 850 millibar winds, this is what we call nadir juice, okay? Uh, you combine some of these reds and browns and whites with those storms, and you you can sometimes get a significant amount of spin. And if you don't get a lot of spin, then you're certainly going to get some ground level straight line damaging winds. It is a good thing that the NAM is suggesting that this is very quickly going to turn into a linear system with a lot of crap vection out in front of it. See, storm chasers refer to all these little tiny showers uh, as crap vection. Okay, normally you would call it convection, but really what this is, is it's just a bunch of crap that's keeping the atmosphere tame. And if you live out here, don't get me wrong, you want that. That's You're rooting for that. But do keep in mind that this over here is the warm sector and we need that to be open uh, if we want to see uh, storms and supercells to form. But right now it's covered up by a bunch of crap vection and that could drastically reduce our tornado threat. Okay, now let's go later on into the night into the early morning hours on Thursday and we're still seeing a severe weather threat over here with these storms and our crap vection is becoming a little bit more organized. And a lot of times what that means is it's going to all kind of clump up here and then get sucked into the low pressure system and possibly leave a clearing slot on the southeastern side, which is what you don't want to see. Moving off to the south and east here at 10 a.m. in western Tennessee, you might be experiencing some rumbles of thunder, some heavier rain. Same thing up there in western Kentucky, uh, but the real storm threat's going to be back here. That might change a little bit as we head later on into the day. Here we are around 1 p.m. Now this is important. 1 p.m. is when the sun comes out. It's when it's really beaming. It's when those convective energy levels can really pop up. And once again, if we see a lot of these clear slots popping up, um, this is where I get kind of concerned about, okay, we might see uh, some significant storms here. We do have some clearing. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of crap vection out here, but any little spot where the sun can come out is going to, uh, to allow for storms to pop up and look at this if i go out to 3 p.m you see how these storms are starting to form and they have kind of like a bean shape to them all of those storms could be tornadic because once again if i switch over here to the lower level jet this is the 850 millibar winds 
Those are very, very uh, intense nadir juice values, okay? Tornadoes are almost certain in this atmosphere if a thunderstorm can become uh, isolated by itself. All of this little convection that's just rain showers is going to help us. So during this storm, it will be important once again to now cast because a lot of the convection is happening in the open warm sector. Look how far back the cold front is lagging. It's not until this cold front comes in that it's gonna try to rake all of them up and turn them into a big linear system like we saw in Oklahoma. And take a look at the significant tornado parameter values. This is a model that puts together the nadir juice the, the the convective energy, the dew points, and, and it kind of just gives us an idea of how favorable conditions are for tornadoes in a general area. And they're elevated, but still technically low uh, throughout Mississippi, all the way up into Western Tennessee. It kind of, you know, maxes out a little bit around 5 p.m. on Thursday in Mississippi, and then does start to drastically decrease as we go later on into the night. So as of right now, I'm thinking this area has the best chance uh, to see tornadoes if that's going to be a thing that we have to deal with on Thursday. So let's show you that progression again. Ooh, watch how the moisture is streaming out of the Gulf of Mexico and then meeting this convection as it goes this way. That's just one way to kind of visualize how you can get that spin and get tornadoes. Watch how they literally crash together there. And a lot of those storms look pretty gnarly, man. Once again, if we can get supercells individualized that look like this, uh, we are almost certainly gonna have a little bit of a problem with tornadoes all the way through the evening on Thursday. So uh, watch out for that. Also, there's gonna be some heavy rain and, and possibly some severe thunderstorms and an isolated tornado threat all the way up into Kentucky uh, but we're mainly focused on this area down here because there's gonna be more heat energy and of course if this is actually what the radar ends up looking like I'm gonna be live here on YouTube so make sure you subscribe with notifications on don't be scared be prepared okay this is not the end of the world this is not the worst looking setup I've ever seen there's definitely a lot of ways that this can fail one of the things is there's not a lot of convective available potential energy out there now if this same system was to come through in April or even March it would be a different story because there would be more heat, just a lot more energy to work with. But this system in particular, I think is going to cause some problems, but it's not going to be this historic tornado outbreak. It's not gonna be something you gotta freak out over. Just make sure you have a plan in place for when those warnings come through. All right, coming back over here to the central U.S. Once again, those heavy snow showers are gonna be taking place in Wyoming, Colorado, and Utah, especially in the higher elevations, and that is going to feed into our big storm system, and we're gonna see some really heavy snow breakout here in Kansas, southeastern Colorado, and maybe into the panhandle of Oklahoma and Texas around 5 a.m. on Thursday, and this is gonna be an extreme weather situation in Oklahoma. Uh, we could be talking about isolated tornadoes and severe weather in eastern Oklahoma, sleet and ice in north central Oklahoma, and then heavy snow back here in the panhandle. So literally, uh, the entire state is experiencing all the seasons of weather at once. But as I crank this forward, you can see what happens. Everything kind of really organizes, and we get this thin band of snow on the northwest side of this system. And whoever ends up underneath this thing and really rides it out is going to end up with a lot of snow. This is going to be heavy snow. So it's going to be hard to forecast, okay? Like if this model is showing that you're going to be in the center of this thin band of snow, uh, but the next one ends up showing that it's just a little, like 50 miles to the south, that's going to make a huge difference in your backyard, okay? Another tricky area to forecast is going to be Chicago, all right? It looks like you're going to start off as rain, switch over to sleet and freezing rain, and then you're going to get that heavy snow. So it'll be interesting to see what ends up happening over there. Zooming into the Great Lakes region here in the oven of Michigan, you're going to start off as snow around 7 a.m. Thursday. Things are going to calm down a little bit, and then that real big heavy burst of snow is going to move in around 3 to 6 p.m. on Thursday. Uh, and it's at this time where you guys, everybody in the blue here, is going to be experiencing intermittent blizzard conditions. Look at the wind gusts here in the snow, a 40 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts. Now I'm not saying you're going to get two feet of snow. Every time that I mention the word blizzard, people think I'm talking about a lot of snow. No, you can have a blizzard with like three inches of snow. It's just the, the snow is going to be blowing. It's going to be hard to see. Visibility is going to be decreased while the snow is falling. Also, it's important to mention that we're going to see some very strong wind gusts just in the rain sector down here. Uh, in Kentucky and Ohio, maybe 40, 50, 60 mile an hour wind gusts, um, not associated with any thunderstorms. So it's going to get messy down there as well. Also, we got to talk about those temperatures, okay? So a lot of places that are seeing snow are going to be in the mid 20s, all the way down into the low 20s, possibly even in the upper teens. And what that means is that any snow that falls is going to stick, okay? So the, the, the liquid to snow ratios are going to be higher. Uh, so some of you guys are going to be surprised and end up with a lot more snow uh, than what you thought you were going to get. Now, our Canadian friends, 
Toronto, you're right on the line. You're, you're in a similar situation to Chicago where uh, this could end up being all rain for you. This could end up being uh, a, an ice storm, uh, or it could end up being a couple inches of good snow. There's just some places that are hard to forecast for in storms like this, and you're one of them. For example, Bay City, Michigan is kind of like a slam dunk forecast. We know that that's going to be a snow area, and we can pretty much tell you how much snow you're going to get. But Chicago, along this line, ooh, it's iffy. Now, Ottawa, after about 3 p.m. on Thursday, I think it's all snow up there. And then, of course, we got to talk about how the Northeast is just getting missed by this thing. It's all rain for all of you guys, everybody from the Mid-Atlantic all the way up into the extreme northeastern portion of the U.S. Uh, you're all rain, except for May in the tippy top of Maine. One problem that we are going to have with this, though, is the, the big winds that are coming through, okay? Look at this, 60 mile an hour winds up here in upstate New York with no thunderstorms. This is just rain and tropical storm force winds, and then possibly hurricane force winds the closer you get to the coast. Once again, this could cause coastal flooding. This could cause some major problems out here. Be ready on Thursday into early in the morning on Friday for very strong winds that could cause damage, especially as we get later into the morning on Friday. Look at that, guys. That's an 80 mile an hour wind gust showing up possibly towards the tip of Long Island. That is going to cause problems. Be ready over here. I don't think this is being talked about enough. This is probably going to be a big problem for you guys. Okay, snow maps. This is what the NAM is showing. Anybody in the pinks and the purples here can see over six inches of snow, possibly all the way up to a foot. But this is just one model, okay? What's the GFS saying? GFS shows almost the exact same thing, okay? With maybe just a little bit less uh, intensity up here near Michigan. Euro is also very similar, but it's definitely a little bit further to the south and east. I told you guys yesterday, if there's any sort of shift that happens here, it's going to be to the south and east. And now here's the official forecast from the National Weather Service. Service. And man, I, I mean, I think that they're a little bit too far to the north and west. I think I like this. This is a safe bet forecast. Everybody in the light blue to the darker blue can expect anywhere from two to six inches, pretty much. The darker the blues, the more snow you can get. There's a couple areas in Kansas here uh, where they're suggesting we could get more than six inches. I think that this is a very conservative forecast, but it's a safe bet. All right, uh, a widespread two to six inches possible everywhere through here uh, with maybe just a slight tick to the south and east. Uh, and that would be what I call my forecast. And certainly there will be some places that end up with more than six inches of snow. And we'll nail that down once again in tomorrow's early, early forecast video. All right, now, not only do we have severe weather, we have heavy snow, we have blizzard conditions, we have uh, heavy rain and wind. We have an ice storm possibly for a lot of people. Uh, some of that freezing rain is uh, going to be popping up in uh, Iowa around 5 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, remember, the pink is going to be freezing rain and the orange is going to be sleet. Okay, and we're team sleet over here. Hashtag team sleet uh, because sleet doesn't cause nearly as many problems as freezing rain. But unfortunately, as the stronger portion of the storm starts to build up, uh, freezing rain is going to be a big problem, especially here in southeastern Kansas, all the way up into central portions of Missouri. Once again, around 9 a.m. Thursday, this could be rain that's accumulating as ice on power lines and trees, causing power problems. Uh, ask our friends down here in Memphis how difficult of a situation that is to deal with. See, what's happening here is all this cold air is in place, right? It's cold. It's going to be below freezing on the ground there in Missouri, but all of this moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, this warm moisture that rises. Remember, we learned this in grade school. Warm air rises, cold air sinks. It rises above that cold air and creates a warm nose. Okay, so there's a warm nose of warm air in the mid-levels here. Any precipitation turns to rain, and then once it gets to the surface, it doesn't have enough time to freeze before it makes impact with the ground, uh, and it freezes on impact, so we get a lot of problems from freezing rain in those areas. And then the sleet back here is when there is time for it to refreeze, and it just turns into a little ice pellet, and it can be annoying, but it's definitely not as bad as freezing rain. Now, look at how some of these thunderstorms are actually flying up into the freezing rain and sleet. I think that some of you guys are going to see thunder sleet during this storm. Uh, once again, this is something I mention often. Uh, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But if you are experiencing thunder snow or thunder sleet in this storm, please tweet me a picture or a video or something of it. I am in love with that phenomenon. As we skedaddle over here to the Great Lakes, it looks like Detroit's going to be getting in on the ice. Uh, northwestern Indiana, a lot of central Illinois, heavy ice accumulations are possible there in excess of a quarter of an inch, which if you combine the problems that we're going to be seeing uh, with wind, could cause significant issues, okay? Even just a quarter of an inch of ice accumulating on surfaces, if you throw a 50 mile an hour wind gust on top of that, 
you're going to snap a power line in half. You're going to bring a tree down. So keep that in mind. Could also end up being a problem over here in Toronto. But once again, you're right on the line there. Here is the ice accumulation map from the NAM 12 kilometer. Bullseye is going to be right here where Missouri and Illinois meet. This is near Quincy and Hannibal. Okay. I think that you guys are definitely in a place where you it's possibly milk and bread time. Okay. Uh, this is one of the areas where I do expect if this kind of ice falls, we're going to experience power outages. Same thing for areas just south of Chicago. It's milk and bread time. Time. Detroit, it's milk and bread time. Uh, I don't know. I know us here in the South, we go get milk and bread when times get tough with the weather. I don't know what you get, but I'm still going to refer to it as milk and bread, okay? We hope that this model is wrong and you just end up with all snow or sleet. Uh, but if this ice falls, you're going to wish you would have got your milk and bread. GFS paints a very similar picture here and the Euro does as well. But once again, it's just a little bit further south and east. So uh, we'll keep a close eye on that as we go into tomorrow and we start our live coverage and all that and I'll make sure you guys are updated worst case scenario is you get your milk and bread you don't need it so you enjoy a nice milk sandwich boy now it is important to mention that in the areas where the rain does not freeze and it's just regular rain and it falls on the ground and it goes into the creeks and streams and rivers uh, we're gonna see a lot of it here in Ohio Valley and Midwest uh, we're talking about uh, above two to three inches of rain some places could see four inches of rain in a very short period of time here uh, if you're in the the oranges or the reds there uh, and you live in a flood prone area uh, please be weather aware and watch those creeks and streams because uh, this is a situation where flooding could happen pretty quickly. Flooding is often overlooked because we're talking about tornadoes, ice and snow, which is much more exciting. Uh, but it always ends up that flooding is what kills the most people when it comes to weather. So don't overlook the flooding situation. If you're in a flood prone area, take it seriously and be prepared. All right. Now you guys know me. I like to take it one storm at a time, but real quick, we'll talk about what's coming next because people are always concerned about, okay, Ryan, I know about this storm. I know I'm going to get rain or I know I'm going to get snow. I know that I need to prepare for tornadoes, but I want to think even further into the future what's next this is the pattern that we're in okay ridge in the east big bowling balls coming down into the western portion of the u.s what happens here is that little storms form and they cut across the u.s like this this is called a cutter this leads to severe weather down here uh, rain and ice and sometimes snow over here and then of course a lot of snow on the backside. so here's our current cutter going by that's going to skedaddle and we re-enter a pattern of very quiet weather here especially around sunday february 20th this is what we call zonal flow we might have some precipitation up here in the extreme northeast and of course in the pacific northwest but for the most of us we are experiencing some very quiet weather for a little bit but look at this another bowling ball comes down and sparks up a potential new weather threat for us as we head into next week okay so this is monday bowling ball comes down potentially sparks up another storm sends it up this way we got another cutter and we're talking about a very similar storm to what we're looking at right now but the intensity of it could change and that means more severe weather or less or more snow or less as we go forward so we're going to continue to watch that and beyond that it's really pointless to look at this things are going to change a lot but this, i do think that this one next week uh, is something that we're going to have to watch very closely so as always stay tuned hit that subscribe button guys you know you want to you don't have to type my name into the search bar every time you can get notifications every time i upload a huge shout out to our members over here and huge shout out to you for just liking the video subscribe and sharing it on facebook i know a lot of you guys are doing that and i am extremely Extremely grateful for it I've got the best job in the world here this is what I've wanted to do since I was six years old and the fact that I can do it on YouTube and don't have to wear a suit and be told I can't say stuff like crap vection means the world to me I love being able to say crap vection lots of content coming up on TikTok, Instagram and all that stuff so follow me over there and I'll see you in the next one goodbye